Well, hey there. Welcome to the Renaissance Woodworker Shop Update. I'm Shannon Rogers. I built a workbench. That's what's been happening this week. Uh, you might have noticed there was no shop update last weekend. That's because I was traveling. I had a, a conference up in Boston, and then I just continued on north up to my in-laws place on Southport Island, Maine, and I finished up this workbench. I started it last summer, and uh, Eh, long story short, it was more about vacation and entertaining guests than it was about getting shop time. So all I was able to do was get some mortise and tenons cut on the leg assemblies. This time, over the course of four days, probably five hours or so in the shop each day, I was able to finish this workbench. Um, this is obviously based upon uh, an English Nicholson style. It was really just something that <clears throat> over the years of looking at benches and things like that, I kind of drew up the design on my own with the intention of wanting to use only construction lumber and as little as possible and using every little bit of the lumber. So all the tiny offcuts and things like that went back into this bench, even so far as <laughs> taking one of the offcuts and using it as my mallet. Uh, because I wanted to build it with the idea that if I were a woodworker getting into this with absolutely nothing, and I specifically wanted to build it in this garage because I don't have all of my tools, my fancy bench, any of that stuff, just what I brought with me in my little tool tote to build this workbench. And, and what you see arrayed here on the workbench is what I use to build it. Very, very few tools. Things that can be acquired at flea markets. Certainly I've got one premium plane, but any old jack plane would do for that. And I've ended up with this incredibly functional, very stout workbench that I ended up spending, I think the total was like $87 on construction lumber, four by fours and things like that. Uh, even made my own fancy uh, dogs using oak dowels. Anyway, um, coming a little bit closer and let's take a look at just some of the features that I really like about this. Well, if you didn't know already, I'm left-handed, so the business end of the bench is down here on the right side because I'm planing into this. I've created a planing stop down here that is on dogs and it just raises and lowers. Um, I've also got a, a peg that is removable. I'm gonna have to shave that down, it's a little tight. We are in the middle of a thunderstorm right now, so everything is swelling a little bit. This peg just goes in and acts essentially as like the crochet where I can put work right up against that peg. I can come in underneath it with a hold fast. Just hold that in place and do any kind of edge uh, planing or whatever work that I need to do right here. Working against the planing stop is something that it seems a little counterintuitive because we have these great invices and things like that. I put a planing stop like this on my own bench and this will raise and lower a little bit to accommodate whatever size, but it's only about 3 16ths of an inch thick so you can use really skinny material and still plane on it. But you constantly are able to pick up the workpiece and look at it, which makes it really efficient when you're planing down to your line or just in general when you're planing. The more you can pay attention to the topography of the board and the less it's locked in, preventing you from picking up and looking at it, the, just the, the more efficient you're going to be. But here's the cool thing. Um, the center notch that's here, this is certainly nothing new. These are benches made up of two slabs here. And I've got four by four braces that run at three points along the bench top here, giving it a really, really strong base. But the planing notch, or planing beam, if you will, has this kind of cool stair step pattern to it. So if I align it with the bench, it drops down flush. If I pick it up and slide it to the left, it stands up proud of the surface an inch and a half. So I can put eight quarter stock, I've got a bit of, 12 quarter mahogany here that can slide up against it and I can push it up against the planing stop right into this inside corner and I can traverse the board, I can go diagonal, I can go with the grain and it's really well supported. At the same time, if I move the whole planing stop over to the right, it now drops down to only a half inch high, which is great for four quarter stock. Same deal, I can put it to the inside corner, work a plane, across the grain, diagonally, and with the grain with full support while at the same time not having to unclamp anything and pick it up. It's a really great design that, you know, it's been around for centuries. I certainly can't, can't claim credit for it. But this is what I'm most excited about. Um, 
not even just planing, but having a fence to work against makes even the, the simplest things easier. Say you need to square a line across. Instead of holding it out here, you put it against the fence, positively registers, and you can get really good uh, layouts done that way. I can even use this as a sawing hook if need be, um, using it in conjunction with a holdfast. And all of my holdfast holes on this side of the bench are positioned so that they reach over the planing stop and they can hold everything tight up against that fence, keeping it firmly in place for if I need to do dado work or anything like that. Likewise, if I were to line this planing stop with the bench so that it goes flush, but say I wanted to make it only a quarter inch reveal, it'd just be a matter of taking a, a quarter inch shim, dropping it on top of one or two of the four by fours in here, and it would allow you to shim the whole piece up so that it is just high enough to do whatever work you're looking for. So there's quite a bit of flexibility there that can be customized to whatever project you're working on. The bench itself is 24 inches wide and it is six feet long and it's built entirely out of two by construction lumber. All of the offcuts, because you go and you buy eight foot long construction lumber, all of the offcuts have been repurposed and put underneath the bench top and inside the apron as additional blocking. So the Bench top itself is actually thicker than what you see here. It's a full three inches thick because of the blocking that's been glued in place underneath it. Same thing with the apron. These holes go through three quarters inch or three inches of material because I've got additional blocking behind it. The planing stop down here is actually going through the same four by four the legs are made out of. So it's got really, really strong support throughout. The entire bench is ridiculously rock solid and sturdy. Pretty happy about that. Also, just the whole idea of using the whole buffalo. All of my scrap was repurposed in building this. As I said before, one of my goals was to use as few tools as possible, as if I were a brand new woodworker with no tools. So I used a jack plane for the milling and dimensioning work. I used this hardware store impulse hardened saw for all of the sawing. I cut the tenons with this saw. I cut everything to length with this saw. Used a couple of these quick clamps for any of the clamping operations, work holding, things like that. I used a single chisel. <laughs> it's a one and a half inch vintage Buck Brothers. It's actually one of my favorite chisels. It did all the pairing of the mortises, pairing of tenon cheeks, things like that. The mortises were primarily hogged out with a one inch auger bit in a vintage brace setup. I used a 3 8 inch auger bit for all the peg holes for the draw bores that happen um, on the mortise and tenon. And then here's a 3 quarter inch auger bit that was used for drilling all the dog holes. And then just a Home Depot special uh, combo square did all of my layout and measuring along with a pencil. And that's it. Just this group of tools. I used a bit of leather um, strop uh, actually mounted to the wall that kept all my tools sharp throughout. And I brought along a single diamond stone if I needed something a little more aggressive than that. But that's really it. This entire bench was built with just those tools. I I'm incredibly proud of this. I've had just a little bit of time to work with it. Um, I I've worked with Nicholson benches before when I was volunteering at the Stepping Stone Museum. I got a lot of time there. Obviously, I have a Rubo at home. And the one thing when people are always talking about Rubo versus Nicholson, I think they're both fantastic designs. They're both highly functional. But the one thing that's going to take some getting used to for me is these big wide aprons. The silliest little things, like I'm used to keeping stuff under the bench. I'm also used to dropping a dog in and then reaching under the bench and popping it back up. And it's like, oh, I can't do that. And then you're like, yeah, I'm just reaching back under here. That's going to take some getting used to. I'm going to have to change my, um, my operating rhythm a little bit. The true like torture and irony of this is I'm heading back to Maryland tomorrow. So I haven't even really had time to work on the bench. I've been working on the bench and building it, but now that it's built, I want to make something using the bench and alas, heading back down south. So I will be back in August and I'll be building a few projects on it then. But uh, until then, I'll just have to dream of my bench.